plus God. Right now, I have the topic of it'd be better for you to be cold and looking at lukewarmness and just looking at the surrounding context of Revelation 3, 14 through 22. And I want to talk about some things it does not mean. And I want to share a few things and go from there. To give my statement on meaning is that these are people that have lost their salvation okay because they're lukewarm people that are saved are not lukewarm and people that are unsaved can never contextually be in the body of Jesus they've never been saved to begin with and the warning of why it is like this is because it refers to the soul death. Okay. Someone spiritually dead right now is not saved. They could be lukewarm, which means they could be someone that has lost their salvation. So they are spiritually dead. And the reason why the warning goes as such in the passage is not because they need to be vomited out to lose salvation then. It's because when they're vomited out and following this out of Leviticus is what happens at their death, which means they go into hell. And then once you die in hell, then it's over. Okay. So, Jesus says that I would thou wert cold or hot. Now, he's speaking in a sense of wisdom because we all know he would rather people just not sin. And especially those in the church, okay? Those that would hold to a once saved, always saved, to try to explain this, to say that they were never saved to begin with. These people are not saved, so they're actually not lukewarm, okay? They're cold, okay? Now, with him being cold, there is something what I would refer to as a two-layer deception, okay? There are these people that they already think they are saved or in the saving way, or I would say at least they know the correct gospel. And then they treat things in life as if whether they're lukewarm or they're hot. Or maybe they're cold. The point is, though, there's no way they could even be hot because they don't even know the right gospel. I mean, if you deny losing salvation, then you can't even understand what's going on here. They just won't make sense to you. So it's the two-layer deception. They have a false gospel, and then they're trying to line themselves up with church doctrine. Okay. So, they get attacked from different places. Now, it doesn't just have to be once saved, always saved. I'm going to start sharing a little bit about something that happened in my past, and then I'm going to share a video that I just recently was listening to last night. It was quite demonic. Why Jesus said that he would rather basically you be cold is because when you're cold, you're cold. You are just that person, okay? With some people, you can talk to them. They'll just honestly tell you they're not going to obey God, okay? I even had one guy who was a beggar. He said that he feared God. 
he even took my gospel track. He wouldn't take a Bible because he honestly said I won't read it. But he did take a track. He's just an honest guy. He honestly said, well, I'm not going to obey God, so I can't sit here and say I'm a Christian. I can't sit here and say that I'm going to go to heaven. He just said, I fear God. I just won't obey God. There's that. I mean, that's entirely cold. When you're lukewarm, and if I follow some things even in the chapter, they say that they're rich. And right here, you're rich, you're hot. If you're actually rich in faith. If you're hot, you're rich in faith. But these people are, and Jesus is rebuking them. They're cold. They're actually poor. Okay. They're as good as cold, but in their state, they're backslidden. I'm going to explain that part of it. And they are deceived. Okay. He's got to stand at the door and knock. Okay. So, those that were actually in a hot state currently, they would have already received the correction on this state of being lukewarm. Now, you cannot get lukewarm water from always being cold. It's just not possible. However, if you were, and we can look at it a few different ways. I mean, if you were cold and then the fire comes from God in you, the Holy Spirit, that's just going to overwhelm the whole thing. You're going to be hot. But if you go back to being cold, just sinning, hot and cold mixed is lukewarm. Okay, the point is you can never get to a lukewarm if you've never been hot because you need a mixture. Okay, this is where people, they say they're rich and they're poor. They got a mixture there and they're lukewarm. Okay, I understand people call false churches today lukewarm. That's okay. I mean, it's between you and God what you say about every last thing. Technically, a lot of these false churches, they couldn't even be lukewarm if that's the only thing they ever knew because they couldn't ever get hot like that. They have a false gospel. Okay, so I'm going to share first this video I was listening to last night. It was what I think was a priest in the Greek Orthodox. And it was in Greek and it was subtitled. Okay. So, assuming that the subtitles are accurate, I'm reading along and I stumbled upon this video because of the title. The title was about demons in the vaccine. Okay. And it was an interesting video. Okay. As far as the information it is seriously demonic though. And shows the two layer deception. I'm going to start talking about here. There was this other priest who took the vaccine. And he was told that he was being warned not to do it. So now, let's go to this two-layer deception, all right? Hypothetically, if you were at one point saved in your youth and then you became Greek Orthodox, you immediately lost your salvation. You might say that you're rich now. You might hold to your prior testimony in the youth and just say that you just found the church now. Okay, that can be lukewarm then. I think that's fine. You could say I'm rich. You know, I have found the windows of heaven and I'm in the true church. You know, we don't have a Pope even and we are the first church. You're unsaved. Okay. You're not saved. And if, if, if you were saved, then I could see it being lukewarm. Okay. Now, if the only thing you've ever known is Greek orthodoxy, which is not the true opinion, okay? It's not the correct way. 
It's false. Okay. It's another. Okay. If that's the only thing you've ever known, you've always been unsaved from the time of youth. All right. So we'll look at it like this. This Orthodox priest, say that's he's been in there, you know, at a young age in the church and grew up into it. This guy, he took the vaccine. God was warning him not to do it. So he says. Okay. And then he gets the vaccine. And he had these demonic things happen to him. Okay. Like one is that apparently he was seeing Satan all day. And one of the warnings that he wasn't supposed to was that when he was walking to the clinic, he had smelled a bad stench in the air, which seemed, you know, it was odd. And another one that he had after getting the vaccine was that he felt miserable. Like he had spiritual problems. I don't know if he had physical problems, but he had spiritual problems. Okay. One was even that, the way I was understanding, he wasn't able to give salutations to Mary in his greetings to Mary in prayers. And all this stuff is super demonic. And what I'm sensing is, is that the devil likes doing this. Because here's someone who's already deceived, but they feel like they're rich, okay, in this sense. And they feel like they're good. And then they think about getting the vaccine, which they're already a sinner, okay? Sinners shouldn't sin anymore. They should stop. Even particular sins they shouldn't do. I mean, if I was talking to him about being Greek Orthodox, I would have also told him, don't take the vaccine. You know, it's wrong. You shouldn't. I would have probably started with some other things like getting the correct gospel and things like this. However, my point is, is that this is how Satan operates because he will layer up more deception because now you've entertained another demon and you see how there's more deception. And now the one presenting this info in the video, he called it being lukewarm. This man who had the vaccine, he was tying it into being lukewarm. Now, to be as accurate as possible, the way I understood it was he was saying that this priest, since he felt so much conviction, that was his way back. Okay. One of the things the demons were saying, apparently, is that that he owns the priest since the priest took the vaccine and that he couldn't come back. Now, the man presenting this material out of the Greek Orthodox faith, he was saying that, you know, upon correction, God started to work back in the priest. Okay. And I think inevitably it ended well in the story. I don't think he got the second dose or something. And... But if you see what's going on, you have someone who's lost already. And then they do a sin and the devil comes in much harder against them on a personal level. The person who's already lost, now they're grieved over it. And then they sense God coming back in their life, but the whole time God is never there. And then sometimes they use this lukewarm idea and cold with it, you know? And there's a lot of people that do that in the church because they'll say, you know, I fall into a sin and I feel terrible. The false church I'm talking about. And they feel terrible, but they sense God coming back to life in them. But all the while, they don't leave the false gospel. 
and they'll say, you know, I'm not lukewarm, you know, I, I'm definitely hot for God. And although I might sin, you know, God corrects me. That's not what Jesus is talking about, though. He's talking about people that have lost salvation and maybe the Greek Orthodox understand that part, but it's a different deception, okay, that people have out there, okay, and there's more layers to it. I remember when I was a sinner, I had come out of certain sins. I was a false Christian. I was attending churches, and I wasn't, you know, into any real religious things, you know, I wasn't really into doctrine, I just knew that there were certain sins I shouldn't be doing, and there are certain sins I stopped, but I was still a sinner, you know, I mean, it's just other sins didn't affect me as much, and I remember this time when I had started to gamble again, gambling was a total idol for me. I mean, it was like my whole life for a while. I was just so addicted to gambling. I gambled so much. And I remember I started gambling again. And it was a short amount of time and I was winning some money. And, you know, I mean, it was a pretty good amount of money. It wasn't like a lot, like life changing, but I was winning and it was successful. And the whole time, though, I felt this conviction that what I was doing was wrong. And it's interesting because I wasn't saved. You know, I have a conscience. And what I realized is the devil was playing another trick on me this whole time because I was already a child of Satan anyway. And I had this other trick being played on me. That, all right, maybe if I would clean up this part a little bit, you know, I'd be back in good graces with God or something. And it's another trick. You might feel stronger convictions at times if you're a sinner. But if you're still a sinner, and you've been a sinner the whole time, and you embrace false gospel and all these things, you're in a cult, like the Greek Orthodox, or whatever the case may be. There's God's many, Lord's many. The devil's just playing tricks with you. Yeah, and then there might be times where you embrace your conscience a little bit more, like getting the vaccine or gambling, okay, or getting drunk, okay? You might embrace your conscience more, but your conscience in other areas is seared. So then the devils can just come in and start playing tricks on you. Like, you can think all day that you're seeing Satan. And, and maybe you are. But the thing is, is that it's another trick, okay? And now when you get like some reproval from one of your brothers at church, which is a true brother to you, but false to the real church, and he corrects you and you feel better about it and you say, okay, I'm leaving this behind. And it makes you feel better. And now the deception's even stronger in your life. And that's how the devil works. Okay. You might even think I lost my salvation by doing this, but I'll go back into the church and I'll be able to greet Mary again and offer a proper salutation and you know, I'll feel alive again, you know, and you know, the certain icon will release, you know, the image of what I need to see and all these things. The window will be open. And here you are, you're more deceived than at the beginning, you know? And you're going to have a worse damnation, okay? So I just remember from listening to this video last night, they incorporated this idea of being lukewarm and being cold and hot through this story. And I'm thinking to myself, man, this deception is fierce. There's layers to it. There's, you know, the vaccines involved, there's sorcery involved. And there's another, I guess he's another priest, the one commentating on it, analyzing the situation. And... Yeah, it's 
hard to figure any of these people come out and get saved. I don't think they will. They could. But yes, the vaccine is a sin. And Jesus would rather you be cold. Okay? When you're deceived, when you say, I'm rich, but you're actually poor, you were in the church right standing, and now you're lukewarm. Yeah. You know, Jesus is standing at the door and knocking, and, you know, you need to repent. And, but you have to buy of him, you know. The only doctrine we know about buying of him is repentance. That first comes before anything. That is where you're going to have to be hot again, you know, Isaiah 55. Okay, and you need the repentance. And that's what he does say, you know, be zealous therefore and repent. But again, you have to remember, you have to start off with the correct foundation. The seven churches were all real churches. Okay. You know, they left their first love. You know, if your first love was being Greek Orthodox, well, your first love is the devil, you know, in this case. So I, another sin... You know, you still haven't left the devil. But what the devil does is he comes in and plays a trick on you and makes you feel like now you're of him. So just go back to what you are doing before and you'll be okay. And great deception there because you're just going to hang on to your Greek orthodoxy. You're going to think, oh, I feel so good now. You know, Satan doesn't present himself like some goblin or something every time. I know there's people with these awkward visions and things, and I think those are satanic too, by the way, but he does come as an angel of light. So you think some angel, and some of these cults are into angels and all that, like heavily. I, mean, I believe in elect angels and fallen angels. I think they exist. I have a head knowledge of them, using the word belief that way. But, you know, these people, they think, oh yeah, there's light in my life, you know, but they're a wicked person. They have vast amounts of heresies and cult behaviors and traditions of men. But that little bit of extra deception, that can really take you for a ride. And I remember that time in my own life that although I was wicked and spiritually dead, I felt this hard, hard conviction for a time. And I do think we as men, you know, we do have a conscience, you know, and sometimes, you know, when we allow it to be clear to us, we realize, man, we're in the state of wrong. And the priest realized he was in a state of wrong, but he never got what was needed to be right. You know, he never bought off Jesus, you know, and me, uh, myself at the time, I never bought off Jesus after that. Maybe I stopped gambling, but I never bought off Jesus after that till years later, you know. And if I would have hung on to that my whole life, I'd still be hung into a false gospel. See, that's why these conversions never happen, guys. You never get a conversion if you believe saved in sin. You never get it. Even if you come out of bad teaching and maybe... I mean, you're obviously not coming out all of it, but even like you might be out there preaching, you need to stop sinning and all these things that are right. But all you got to do is hang on to your false testimony that you're in these sins, but you found God. It's just going to leak out into your ministry. And, you know, it just leaked out into this story I listened to last night. The orthodoxy and the Greek orthodoxy is what leaked out, you know, back right into it. If you hang on to your false testimony your whole life, you're going to go to hell. It doesn't matter if you stop doing the sins. It doesn't matter if you say you have faith in Jesus. It doesn't matter if you're preaching on the street. You're hanging on to something that's not of Jesus. And those things that you hang on to like that means you've not denied yourself. Okay? And that's one thing that's hard for people to deny about themselves is their false testimony. And 
inevitably what the devil is going to do when this word is sown, he's going to come and just snatch it out because he wants you to hang on to the false testimony because then he can give you so many other deceptions along the way to keep you on board. And that's what the demons do. And, you know, needless to say, I mean, God is everywhere. God is light. God is life. God is good. God is perfect. He's offering all these things and hardly anyone receives it and then dies in faith. So the demons are, you know, doing their deceptions. You know, their deceptions keep going. You know, they don't just give up possession. Okay. You know, the strong man must first be bound and then the house spoiled. Hey, but you are feeding the strong man. You are feeding the demons. And so the, de the devils come in with just these other subtle little things. And yeah, the vaccine could be one of them. So some people might get vaccinated. They might feel bad. They, they need to come back to God, they think. But the whole time their God was the God of once saved, always saved. So they never found Jesus yet. And here they thought they came back to God and they had some bitter repentance. And and yet they're still unsaved as at the first. So, fear God. Fear God, you know, and look at these things. You know, if our heart condemn us not, that is true. But what happens when you're deceived into thinking your heart is right with God? Deep down, deep down, Deep, deep, I mentioned all these things. God is good, God is perfect, God is everywhere. Deep, if you go deep enough, God will show you your heart's not right with him. However, there's a lot of people that don't go deep enough, okay? They might feel some depth every now and again with conscience. Okay, the Pharisees even went away by their own conscience. You can feel things in life, but you have to have the fear of God. The Holy Spirit must open it all up. Yes, it is true. If your heart condemn us not, if our heart does not condemn us, you know, this is good. Okay. Bless God. However, you do have to examine yourself to make sure you're not deceived. Okay. Because there's people going to say, my heart does not condemn me. And we know it is condemning them if they would look deep enough, if they would fear God. Because we know the tree by the fruit. For example, giving salutations to Mary. This is sin. Okay, so praise God.